Right, yes. I know it's warm here this morning. Actually, we've arrived. When I got into the studio this morning, Shana got all the windows open. So, yeah, she's a bit of a... I know, it's lovely, isn't it? We're so lucky to be here, actually, um, on the estate, because it is just absolutely gorgeous. One of the things that uh, I'm really enjoying this year is feeding the birds. I mean, I, I know it's a little bit middle-aged, isn't it, really? And actually, Winter Watch starts tonight. I love that. I really love that. Autumn Watch, Spring Watch, Winter Watch. I love them all. I really do. Um, so I hope you are able to feed the birds where you are. Um, and it looks like, oh, lovely. If I stand back this way, I can just about read. If I go any closer, I'll need to get my other glasses out. Um, morning, everybody. Oh, gosh, we're joining with lots of people today. Oh, brilliant. Sharon's popped up the free PMP code already, so that's really good. Oh, Bridget says she's on leave today, so you can enjoy live for a change. Oh, well, well, thank you for joining us, Bridget. That's really lovely. Now, this time last week, we launched our loungewear, the mechanicals, and it appears that you really like them, which is fantastic. Thank you very much for ordering all the patterns. Now, there was a little bit of confusion. Now, this probably was partly us, actually, because when we kind of set everything up, we thought, well, do you know what? People would just want to have a look at the PDFs first, um, have a little read through, see what they like. Then maybe they'll decide if they want to use the PDF printing service. No, you guys were just in there straight away. So um, apologies for the confusion. Next time we do a pattern launch, we'll make sure that we've got everything there ready for you because um, we thought you might want to kind of like have a little think about it, but clearly you don't. You just want to jump straight in, which is fantastic. Um, so yes, that's wonderful. Um, and we've got the loungewear behind me here because today it's all about layering. So um, it's that kind of weather, isn't it? It's that kind of weather. Oh, lovely, people are talking about bird watching. This is brilliant because obviously there's a little bit of a delay. So I'm rambling on about something, completely changed the point and actually all the comments are what I was talking about a minute ago, but that's brilliant. I was gonna have a quick read and see. Oh, Karen, you've got gold finches. That's rather exciting. Brilliant. Oh, good. Lots of other people are joining me with the feeding the birds. That's brilliant. My daughter looks at me when I'm kind of like looking out going, oh, look, look what we've got. Look, I think it's a blue tit. Oh, and it's a great tit. She's like looking at me. Seriously, is that the highlight of your life? Like I'm, I'm a total epic fail. But then kids do that, don't they? Um, oh, morning, Marilyn. Oh, you've sorted your multi patterns. Good. Brilliant. And you started the leggings. That's fabulous. Lovely. Um, oh, lovely Hannah says she's enjoying the new patterns. Morning, Debbie. How are you? Oh, you broke an ankle. You poor thing. Well, the yoga pants will probably be just about right, actually, because you probably fit those over your plaster around your ankle, I expect. Um, oh, Janet says, watching. Oh, you've watched the uh, PDF video. OK. <laughs> but you're notoriously cat-handed. Do you know what? Kind of. Some people get really, really kind of precious about it when you're doing PDF matching up. Um, as long as you can get kind of the right shape, I wouldn't really sweat it too much. It doesn't have to be totally, completely perfect. What we try and do is when we do the PDF patterns, we try and do it so that uh, all of the major things, the major kind of notches and things like that, aren't on joins. Sometimes we can't help, but avoid, can't help it, but most of the time we try and do it so that anything major isn't on a join so you should be okay just to kind of blend lines if it is a little bit squiffy the other thing I would do is when you're doing a big pdf is don't try and match up the whole thing just match up the bits where you've got um, a pattern or even what I tend to do is lay it out and then cut roughly around each pattern piece and then just stick all the bits together for that individual pattern piece so you're not having to try and match the whole thing that does make it a little bit easier because sometimes with the best will in the world, we try and match things up and it's just a little bit out. And then if the next one's a little bit out, by the time you get to the end of a row, you're kind of about a centimetre out or something ridiculous. So I would lay it all out first and then cut roughly around each of your pattern pieces and then try and match up all of those bits. And I think you'll probably find it a little bit easier that way. So that's my tip for the day when it comes to PDF patterns. Um, 
bow curses. Will I be doing the pattern for all those fluffy oversized tops that are all the fashion and stupid prices at over 100 quid? <laughs> that's the, um, they, yeah, they're really cool. But do you know what? You could kind of do that with a Julia, actually. A Julia top is almost like that, or perhaps even a Paulina dress. Just making it, yeah, a bit longer if you wanted to. So that's quite a cool idea. Uh, morning, Anita. You've got stuff to do. Catch you later. That's good. Morning, Lysandria. How are you? Uh, oh, Rob's grew up near Epping Forest and loves bird watching. Brilliant. There we go. I hope that helps. Uh, Annette says, if I, my test square is bigger than 10 centimetres, can I make a smaller size? No. I'm going to say the answer to that one. No, because it's going to throw everything out. If your test square is bigger or smaller it means you need to readjust your print size so what you should do is on your printer it should say hit print at 100 percent and that way just print off the first page and you should have your test square on there you can double check that if your test square isn't right it is going to throw off the rest of the pattern it isn't just a question of just being able to make a smaller size unfortunately it would kind of make sense to do so but it actually doesn't work so I would try and make sure that you get your test square the right size and then you'll be good to go. That's cool. Right, fabrics this morning. So I thought we would have a little look at some things that we can layer because we're kind of coming into spring, she says, fingers crossed. Um, and it's about layering, isn't it? Because you don't want a massive great big jumper on because it gets a bit warm indoors and then if you go outside you want to put another layer on so this is where it all kind of comes into layering now I've got some really lovely stripey jerseys now who doesn't love a stripe this is gorgeous it's a single jersey so it is really nice it's got five percent elastane in it so it's got really good return as well and it's a red and white stripe. Now it looks a little bit pinky when you put it all together, but that's only because it's got the red underneath it. When you put it on your underneath your hand, it definitely looks red and white. Now I've got my eye on this, I really have, because I think this will go under all of my navy linen and denim dresses that I've got, which I think is amazing. I love this, it's absolutely gorgeous. I think Sharon's gonna start putting the links up very soon. Oh, there we go. More comments coming through. Let's just have a quick read. Oh. Okay. There's a conversation going on within a conversation here, which I really like. <laughs> oh. oh, you love my top. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. It's, um, this is the Helena dress. And I've just got a normal white t-shirt underneath it. So this is what I mean about layering. It's just... It's just so good. You, I love it. I really do. So, red and white, red with red and white stripes. Maybe, maybe not. I quite like this anyway. But I think this, my lovely true red linen, would look wonderful with some of the other um, plain colours that we've got. Now, we've got the, the navy that I was wearing for my leggings last week. We've got that in stock now, along with a lovely dark grey. So those, both of those would be perfect for kind of base layer leggings, which would be wonderful. Red linen, I think, is just gorgeous. Now, we've made up the uh, Amelia dress in that, which you can see on the website. But that with a lovely pale um, plain blue T-shirt underneath it or a pair of plain leggings, I think would look amazing. And I love this fabric. I really do. Now, I'm just going down here because... Now, I just thought I would bring those out because... I can show you these. Now that's the Amelia, which is a really lovely one to wear. Um, it's great for layering as well. It's absolutely perfect. Um, this one's got the collar. We've got the other version that doesn't have the collar. I'm gonna pop that in there so you can see that one. Um, and I love this. Now I've got my heart set on a pair of charcoal gray leggings to wear underneath my Hippolyta, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. I love this print so much. It's really lovely. Um, so I was wearing Hippolyta last week, but in my navy linen version. But I think, oh dear, this is what's going to happen now. It's all going to fall off. It's all going to go, it's all going to go peak tog. There we go. Thanks, Emma. Ooh. Thank you. Brilliant. 
So we've got red linen. I think this works really nicely. Now you could put a contrast rib with it. Um, you could just have a plain vest top underneath it. Now the ribs that we've got, they are cut in a circle and a lot of them are, well, they're kind of made really for, um, for edging. However, if you've got a little garment, like a vest top or something like that, you can just split this open, open it out and just use it as a piece of fabric. Now, it's because it's quite stretchy, just for a little kind of vest top, a rib knit is ideal, actually, because it's got really good return on it. So you could use the ribbing as vest top fabric, which is quite cool. I quite like the idea of that. I'm going to move this one out of the way. And now then, again, when it comes to layering, oh, let's put that one back there for a sec. I love the idea of trousers, tops, dresses, all kind of mishmashed together, which I think is a really lovely way of wearing your clothes. And it also means that you can wear things throughout the year. So you're not having to just limit lighter weight cotton dresses or linen dresses just to the summer or warmer months. You can actually layer them over and uh, you get a lot more wear out of them then as well. Um, oh, oh, more tips coming on PDF printing. That's brilliant. Thank you. That's really good. That's brilliant. Someone said Dennis the Menace stripes. Yes, they are a bit, aren't they? That's really cool. So I like this. Now this is a wool mix and it's got a very slight herringbone in it. I have shown it to you before. We've got the blue version, which is this one. And it has got, you can just see, just about see the blue in there. Um, this is absolutely perfect for aerial trousers. So if you want that kind of slightly slouchy, um, casual kind of look, aerial is brilliant. Um, you could also make a really nice pair of soft, wide leg trousers. I quite like the ones that are a little bit cropped at the moment. So they kind of like, look like they've had an argument with your ankles. But I think that looks really cool because you can wear those with like bright socks and brogues or boots and things like that. Again, you can layer things up over the top of these. So vest tops, t-shirts, um, you could have a long sleeve t-shirt underneath a dress over a long pair of trousers. I think all of those work really nicely. So those I think are really good. Oh, who's someone's coming down the stairs? Oh, hello. <laughs> you can't sneak around in this place, no, unfortunately. There's a couple of people saying they've been ordered, it's a bit quiet. Oh dear, okay. I can turn it up on this here, okay. Is it coming through George's mic though? Oh, are we having a problems with the, the sound? Oh, is that coming from the right one? Sorry. Let yeah, me yeah, just check. Because yeah. there were two. Yes, that is incorrect. Hopefully it should be okay now. Okay. Linda says sounds very quiet, so hopefully we should be back up. Oh, Vanessa says it's quiet. Donna says sound is fine. Lovely. Oh, technology. Technology, technology. Yes. It, it should be okay now. Turned it up on okay. The, on the computer, but if people can listen, let us let know. Us know. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Everyone's saying that's fine. Marvelous. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so someone's just asked for a reminder about the way the single jersey uh, rolls. So basically, single jersey, normal t shirt fabric, rolls up onto the right side along the weft grain rolls down onto the wrong side on the warp grain. Okay, so that's kind of how you know which is the right and the wrong. You can kind of see because on a single jersey, you'll have a knit and a pearl side. So you will have a right and a wrong side of the, of the, of the fabric as well. So which one is the weft, which one is the warp? The weft. The weft is the one that goes weft, like that goes across the fabric. And the warp is the one that goes warp <laughs> like that. And that goes along the fabric. I there you go. That. You I'll did that just because you knew that I was going to do that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that's good. Oh, now. Oh, Claire says, I don't have an overlocker. I'm worried about making up knits. Don't worry. You don't need an overlocker. As long as you've got a stretch stitch on your sewing machine, and I would definitely recommend getting a walking foot as well. You will be absolutely fine. Uh, if you want to work much more with knit fabrics, I would recommend saving up and getting an overlocker. They don't have to be hugely expensive. Um, 
I would get the best that you can afford because that will last you a lot longer. Um, but they do make everything so much easier. But you don't need one. You can just work with a normal sewing machine. Thank you, darling. I'll try creep he's going to creep. He's going to creep back upstairs now, up the creaky staircase. Um, so I wouldn't panic too much. You will have, uh, now what we are going to be doing, one of the courses that we're working on at the moment is a working with knits course. So that's going to be available very soon in the sewing studio. So you'll be able to have a look and have all of the information in there as well. Um, but I would just have practice. So get your jersey fabric, cut out your pieces and then all the scrap bits, you can test the settings on your machine and just write down what the best ones are so that you've got that to refer back to next time. That's a good way of dealing with it. Uh, let's have a quick look. Oh, we've got more, oh, lots of chatty people today, which is marvellous. That's really good. Good, oh, the sound is brilliant. That's brilliant, fantastic. So that's good. Uh, oh, Claire says, we've got a Britannia overlocker. There we go, that's fine. Charlie's just dumped in, that's brilliant. Okay, so back to the fabrics. Back to the fabrics. Now. Yeah, I was saying about the rib. So you could have a stripy rib vest if you wanted to um, or any of the other ribs that we've got. That would work, actually. Just cut it up the fold, one of the folds, and use it as a single layer of fabric. The only thing is it's quite narrow, so you would need twice the length plus strips to do any binding or uh, neck bands and things like that as well. Um, all Claire says she's in the sewing studio already. Fantastic, that's good, brilliant. So you could always use rib as fabric instead of just edging around the neckbands and stuff, which is quite a nice idea. The other colorway, we've got this stripe in three colorways at the moment, is blue. So I love this. This is a dark blue, light blue stripe. And again, I think this would look amazing under some of our linens. Um, I think this is just gorgeous. I've already got, we've got the other colourway is grey and I want them all, actually. In fact, I think I might just batch make myself a load of t-shirts because I think that's going to be the way to go. I really do. Um, oh, ribbing. Would ribbing be good for the mechanical vest pattern? Yes, absolutely. There we go. As long as when you open it out, the width of the ribbing, so don't forget, the ribbing is twice that, so you'd split up one side, as long as you can get your pattern piece out of the laid out width of the ribbing, you'll be absolutely fine. Otherwise, what you could do is give yourself seams down the centre front, centre back, and that way you can kind of maybe mix and match it a little bit. Um, again, if you've got an overlocker, you could do um, a flat lock stitch down the front, if you've got a cover stitch, you could even do a decorative cover stitch and actually have the reverse of the cover stitch on the right side. And that gives you a really nice kind of interesting effect when you're kind of top stitching. So that's another way that you can use that, which is quite cool. Right, now this, I absolutely adore this fabric. I've got a pair of aerial trousers in this and I think it's just amazing. It's very lightweight, so it's probably more sort of spring summer fabric but it's a midnight crepe. It's, um, oh, I'm trying to think of that. Who's it from? Atelier Brunette, that's who it's from. And it's a really gorgeous weight. So this would be absolutely lovely in uh, aerial trousers. You could make a beautiful cape dress, a really nice soft cape dress that you could wear as a tunic over leggings and t-shirts as well. I think that's absolutely beautiful, I really do. Sharon will put, oh, there we go, she's stuck the link up already, that's fantastic. <laughs> Morning, Mandy, how was the, <laughs> question for Charlie, how was the cake? He, do you know what, that made his week, it really did. When he came home and said to me, this lady came up to me and just gave me cake. It just made his week, it really did. That was, thank you so much, he loved it. It even went into his Five Good Things newsletter that he does every week, so that was brilliant. Um, so yes, there we've got, that's our lovely crepe, Fat Midnight, soft, mid, soft crepe in night. I think that's absolutely beautiful. Um, again, they kind of work with all kinds of different patterns. 
So as well as having the dresses that Emma's just taken off me, um, it would work in, um, Imogen would be ideal for this. In fact, what would look really nice is to have a long sleeve white t-shirt with a short sleeved Imogen over the top. Now Imogen is our raglan blouse. Oh, Emma's just gonna rush and see if she can find the pattern for me, thank you. I'm a bit late this morning. Oh, don't worry. They're not in alphabetical order, are they? Oh, you found one. Oh, marvellous. Okay. So Imogen, thank you, is our lovely raglan sleeve top, which is really, it's actually a very straightforward one to make. Now, it has the placket, but that's not a big deal. As long as you're accurate, you'll be absolutely fine. In fact, I think we've got a blog post on how to do the placket part for you. So that's really cool. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be really nice. And a lovely pair of... Um, navy aerial with a long line oh yeah i'm picturing that now yeah aerial trousers long line white t-shirt and, and a imogen over the top oh oh i can yes exactly but it's smart enough from the top half up which is key isn't it really because we've got to be yeah it doesn't matter what we're wearing underneath we can be in our pajamas which um charlie frequently is and then just making sure that we look reasonably human on top. They are. They are secret pajamas. They are absolutely are. Right, let's move some of these out of the way, and then we can get on to the other ones. Now I love this. This was. Is it art creation? It is called art creation, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, someone's just asked a question there. Let me just have a quick. What other fabrics for the new comfortable patterns, pants pattern? Oh, Lasandria. We've got some other ones coming up. Now, I have to say, I'm a little bit of a sucker for toweling. I know. Not necessarily a particularly trendy fabric, but I absolutely love it. We've got some, I can show you that in a sec. That for the um, snout yoga pants would be just to die for. Really would. I love that. Uh, oh, Charlie's expressing thank you for... His delicious cake that's lovely could you use the crepe for Porsche trousers you could but it is quite a lightweight one yes would crepe work with the peas blossom absolutely Jan that would be ideal yeah totally um, this is another lighter weight more of a blousy kind of fabric however do you know what if you've really fancied a pair of uh, aerial in this I think that would be quite cool actually wouldn't it be a bit bonkers but I think that would work. Again, this is more of a blousy kind of thing, but again, it's the kind of thing. Now we've got a, a plain black or a plain navy or even a plain pink t-shirting fabric that would actually look really nice with that. The nice thing is you've got lots of different colors in there. So you can pick up whatever you fancy, really. It would go with everything. I like that, I think that's a really nice one. Now, this is another one which I really love, which is the feather. Now I've got this as leggings, but I actually think it would look really cool with a plain navy dress to have a matching t-shirt and leggings underneath and then the dress over the top, which I think would be quite nice actually. That would be quite cool. Um, not quite. I was gonna say, oh, patterned leggings, check dress, but I don't think so. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. Little bit busy, little bit busy. Uh, Oh, morning, Linda. You're late today. Don't worry. That's fine. We're here. We're not going anywhere. That's cool. Let's move that one out of the way. And then we can start bringing some of the other ones forward. Now, these are a bit brighter, but I absolutely love them. So we've got navy, navy linen. This kind of goes with everything, actually. And I think you could definitely have either the red and the white stripe or the blue and the blue stripe underneath this as a, as a kind of a base layer. But then we've got the um, plain navy. So this was the navy that I was wearing in my leggings last week that we've got in stock now. But also, I really like navy and pink. I think a pair of fuchsia leggings underneath would almost look like snag tights, Sharon's favourite snag tights. Um, but you could definitely get away with making a bright pink pair of leggings, I think, which would look really cool. Um, and I love this. So this is a linen. 
Uh, Sharon's going to probably put the right name up because I've completely forgotten what it is. But it has a beautiful slub in it. So this was the fabric that we had made up in the Amelia that wouldn't hang up here. Um, and it's a really gorgeous fabric, actually. I think Sharon's made a dress in this. It's lovely. So this with the navy leggings, actually, I think would work beautifully. Um, you could have a nice plain navy or a plain white t-shirt underneath it or even go for one of the patterned ones actually which I think would work really well um, this is a beautiful fabric and again it's 100% linen uh, oh Rotha says you love the big check all the pretty colors are cheering you up good that's what we were hoping we want some nice bright cheery things I'm hoping that the daffodils are going to start coming out soon um, and then we can have all of the daffodils in the studio which I love um, but this is gorgeous. Now, it's actually a viscose fabric, so it's really nice and soft, but I love this. Again, I quite like the idea of this in an Imogen top, actually. It has that really nice, soft, drapey kind of quality to it, which is lovely. There we are. So, another thing that we've got going on here I quite like is the pink linen. Now... This is absolutely gorgeous. It is slightly heavier. It's got the two colours woven together. It is a proper, this is I'm gonna, what I'm gonna save my money up kind of for fabric, this is. It's absolutely beautiful. I think it is gorgeous. And again, I think it would work fantastically with our navy, oops, no, with the navy t-shirting. I just love this colour, I really do. It's such a, an explosion of um, brightness, isn't it, really? It just makes you, it is really cheery. It's, it's the thought of things to come, isn't it? It's lovely. Oh, Amy said you've got hyacinths in your porch. Oh, I know, they, they do smell like spring, don't they? They're so lovely. It just cheers you up, that's what we need, isn't it? Things to cheer us up at the moment. Um, can you use laundered linen for aerial? Sue, absolutely. Yes, I've got um, a khaki, the Hunter Gre Hunter's Green pair. I don't think we've got them here, actually. No. I took them home and I wore them. Oops. I will bring them back. So, yes, you absolutely could wear um, the aerial trousers in um, the linen that we've got here. Yeah, would work perfectly. Do we, no, Sally, do we sell the instructions with a ready printed? No, we don't sell it because we wanted to do this as a PDF because doing the whole lot as a printed booklet would make it really quite expensive. So what we thought we would do is actually do it as a PDF. And it could be that out of the collection of five, you might not, not necessarily want to make all of them. But if you've got all of the printed patterns and the whole thing, that's kind of what you're paying for, really. So we thought we'd give people the option. So you've got all of the PDFs as a download, but you don't have to print them off if you don't want to. Um, but then we also offer the PDF printing service. So if you want to, you can have all of them printed out and we can send those to you. Um, we just thought it was probably the most cost effective way of doing it all, really. But you need to specify sizes yes. and which Yes, you want. exactly. So. When you go onto the product page on the website, you're given two sizing options. We've got the misses and we've got the curvy. So have a look at the blog that we've got on our website as well. And that will tell you a bit more about the two differences, the different size ranges that we've got. And then you need to specify in your order for the PDF printing service, which pattern you would like and which size range you would like. OK, so all you've got to do is put that in the comments when you're putting your order through with the order number, with the order number that you've already done for your um, PDF pattern. OK, it doesn't it's not complicated. It is pretty straightforward. Have a little read on the on the blog and the website. and All the information is there for you. So basically you order the PDF and pay for that so that you've got the uh, Mrs. or the curvy. And then if you decide you want to have any of the patterns printed by us, you can order that through the PDF printing service. So all of the patterns in the loungewear, the, uh, the flute vest, the snug tee, the robin leggings, the snout yoga pants and the quince cardi are all listed individually 
under whatever size pattern they are. So it would be small, medium, large. I think, I don't think any of them are extra large. Um, so that way you can then decide which one you want to choose to have printed and just pop that in the comments. And then we'll know exactly what we need to do for you and we can get it all printed out and posted out. So you'll be ready and raring to go with all of your making. That's cool. Is it a raspberry pink? It's, uh, it's quite a blue pink, actually. I would call it more of a shocking pink, this one, if that's the one that you're after, which I think so. Um, what fabrics are suitable for the Hermione top, says Teresa. Um, do you know, Teresa, to be perfectly honest, Hermione works in almost anything, actually, because as long as it's lightweight, so any of our linens would be perfect, any of the viscose crepes would be perfect, um, any of the luxury crepes we've got would be ideal. Um, some of the cotton lawns, but they're going to be a little bit crisper looking. Anything that's got a little bit of sort of drape to it is probably going to be ideal. Now, don't forget when you do the tie, you will see the reverse of the fabric. But if that's OK, then you're totally away with that. That's really good. Um, Tina says, oops, I don't think I put the order number in. Don't worry, Tina. Sharon will hassle you if she needs to. That's fine. She's on the case. Uh, oh, Janet says, I recommend getting the patterns printed for you. It's worth the money. There we go. Hopefully by us. That'd be even better. Uh, if we order, OK, Marin says, if we want to order the printouts, can we stagger the order for each pattern so we don't have to pay for them all at once? Yeah, you can order them as and when you like, Marilyn. That's absolutely fine. As long as you just pop in your original PDF pattern order number, then we can just cross reference that and just make sure that, you know, you've got your order sorted. That's no problem. So you can order them whenever you like. Really? That's totally cool. Uh, do you know when we'll be getting navy moon thread in? Uh, so that's probably we have got navy moon thread in. There should be some available on the website. Um, otherwise, email us. And if there's a particular number that you need or something that you're trying to match, email us and we'll see if we can get it for you. Um, Oh, let's have a quick look. I can hear them chatting upstairs, actually. Was that Charlie? That's Charlie's voice, isn't it? He does have a voice that carries. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> uh, Sally says she's used the PDF printing service, uh, but you do miss the little buff folders with pictures. <laughs> I know. We are going to be doing some others. It's just that there was five patterns. So we thought easiest way to do it is just do it as PDFs. However, the next pattern we're doing will be a paper version and a PDF, so you'll be okay there. Um, uh, oh, you love the printed patterns. Best you've seen? Oh, thank you. That's really nice to know. Thank you. Um, right. Let's go back to fabrics, because that's what we're here for really today, isn't it? Although I do like chatting to people. That is rather nice too. So I love this. This is one of my favourites. Um, this isn't one of our linens, but we are going to be getting some other colours in. Um, we're just waiting for the, we're waiting for Brexit to sort itself out, to be perfectly honest. And then we can decide how we're going to bring other fabrics into the country. Um, preferably not by carrier pigeon, which is what um, everything seems to be at the moment. <laughs> Let's move this out of the way. As you can tell, I'm not a fan, but there we go. Um, right, now, the other jersey that we've come in, this one, one of the other jerseys that's new this week is this one. Now, I love this. I think it's just really springy and fresh. And I think, actually, that would look really nice as a little T-shirt underneath something. In fact, it would look really nice underneath our new pattern that we're working on, which I'm not going to tell you anything about because I'm very good at letting the cat out of the bag. But I think this would lo be lovely. Actually, it does work really nicely with the pink linen. It's the same kind of pink. It's quite a bluey pink. And I think actually that looks really nice. Oh, brilliant. Sharon's popped up the... Um, uh, do we sell moon thread colour cards? We don't, unfortunately. Um, I don't know where we'd be able to get those from. I don't think we are... Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe I can get Sharon having a look at that. We'll see what we can do. There we go. This one is called, it's Summer Shine Cotton Jersey. There we go. And I think that's really pretty, really pretty. Obviously it would go with other colors, but I think it really picks it out and makes it nice and spring-like. Right, I'm gonna pop that one down out the way now. So we've got the other thing I quite like. Now this is a sweater knit. Now I've heard them referred to as a hatchy knits as well. 
Is it Hachi? Yeah, Hachi knits. They very, very light uh, sweater knits. Um, and this, I think, would make up beautifully. This isn't the one that we used for the quince. This is a double one. In fact, I've got the single one just next door, actually. Um, but this is a double one, so it's a slightly nicer, heavier weight. But this would look lovely if you were going to have, again, you were going to be doing your layering. So I think this over the top of a really pretty little T-shirt, I think would be ideal, actually. Is it warmer as well? It is slightly warmer, actually. Yeah, it's slightly heavier. Mm, it looks uh, cosy. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a very soft knit, actually, which is beautiful. And I think they all work really nicely together. I like the whole kind of pink and... Um, navy and that kind of spray it just yeah it, they're sweet colors i don't we mentioned this might have mentioned this before colors have tastes which is a bit yeah, weird we yeah she's teasing us again i know i'm gonna keep stum dora i'm gonna keep stum don't worry don't worry so this is the kind of blue and pinks color range that we've got now we've got some of the more subtle ones that i can show you as well now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move that one out and then we can bring forward now, I'm going to leave the pink there because I actually think grey and pink look a really nice combination. So some of these, I think, would work really nicely. Let me move my lovely, my beloved navy linen and move that out of the way. Although, actually, navy linen works really nicely with grey as well. There we go. So these are oops what a gray is almost like an alternative to navy isn't it because it's just like a base color yeah totally now this is the other stripe that i was talking to you about now this is a gray and gray it's almost kind of like the reverse of that actually but again it's a really nice soft fabric and that's the stretch so you've got the dark gray and the light gray going with it which is really good uh <laughs> she got i like this jan says i think it's got something to do with comfort eating sweet colors make us feel good in dire times i think you're i think you're right i think you're absolutely right sweeties they're like sweeties aren't they brilliant fabrics this is lovely again i think it would work really nicely you could use this as a base layer for, um, now I haven't got it out today, but we've got the, um, our mustardy colour <sighs> linen. My brain has got really got, my brain is totally shot today. I can't remember what we called it now. No, Sharon will know. The caramel colour. Yeah. Is it caramel? It's not, it's not called caramel. No, it's not called caramel. It, called? it used to be called wood thrush. Options. There were too many options. You were brilliant at coming up with names for them. You really were. Um, that's fine, don't worry. But our kind of mustardy, burnt colour. Anyway, it will go really nicely with that. I haven't got it out today, otherwise I wouldn't know what the colour was. I've completely <laughs> forgotten. My brain is actually completely fried at the moment. You wouldn't believe what I've got going on at the moment. But there we go. So this is a really lovely one. Again, it works really nicely with the yellows. So if you've got the lovely acid yellow, that would be really nice. Again, navy. I think actually red and grey can look really good together too. So you've got lots of different options there. I also think it works really nicely with pink. Now this is the single jersey that we've made the quince cardigan in. Oh, look, there she is. Sharon's put it up. Warm spice. Warm spice, that's the one. That's it. I keep thinking of old spice, but no, it's warm <laughs> spice. Um, so actually, I think this would be really nice. So you could have... A lovely, um, actually, I'm going to get, oh, look, now this is, this is my toweling. I don't know what it is about toweling. I just have such fond memories of it. I really do. But a pair of snout yoga pants in toweling. Sharon's going to be, I can hear her up there now. She's going, what on earth is she talking about? But actually, I think it would work really well. I would, oh, Teresa says, you're an NHS nurse and fabric and colours and sewing keep you going. Well, I'm hoping that you do keep going because I think you're, anybody working for the NHS at the moment is doing an absolutely fantastic job. And my hat goes off to you. It really does. Um, but I think this would look amazing with that. I'm hoping, that, Teresa, that you've got lots of sewing projects on the go and uh, all the colours are making you smile today. 
Um, so I think a really lovely striped t-shirt, pair of snout pants and a quince cardi would be really nice actually. I think that would go beautifully together. I like that. It's almost slightly Neapolitan ice creamy kind of colours, but not quite. Not quite. Um, again, with the dark grey linen, I think that works really nicely. Now again, I like this dark grey. You can put the stripy rib with it too. That would go really nicely if you want to have a little bit of stretch on the cuffs or the neckband. That would work just as well too. And we've got now slightly more kind of neutrally colours coming through. Let's move that up there. That can go on there. Let's bring some of these down. So again, I need a bigger table, don't I really? Let's move those for further down. So this is kind of continuing with the grey kind of theme, but this is our dark grey plain jersey. So again, this would be absolutely ideal for base layers. So a pair of leggings or a long sleeve t-shirt under anything. Again, I think I've got my, this is, I've got my eye on a pair of leggings in this to go underneath my um, bright printed Hippolyta. I think that would work really nicely. Um, all the kind of, it's just mixing and matching. I think that's the biggest thing really. Let's move this out of the way. So that's the lovely dark grey linen. I need some more table space really. Pop that one out of the way. There. So again, I think the plain grey actually goes quite nicely with the um, flannel, the toweling. Oh, Mary, you were at an online funeral. Need some brightness. And Jules's calming voice. Well, some people have said it's a bit soporific. I might end up putting you to sleep. You never know. Um, but that's, I'm glad you've joined us today. Hopefully we'll be able to cheer you up a bit there. Um, oh, Maria says, Technic Tuesdays always take me to such a happy place. It's like being in a sweet shop. Absolutely, a little fabric sweet shop. If we can be the Charlie in the chocolate factory of the fabric world, I will feel my work here is done. That's brilliant. Now, there's another one that I want to show you, which I absolutely love. And it's really interesting because we kind of get to know our customers really well. Oh, oh. she's slapping the clay about next door. Oh dear, she's working out some aggression, I think. I love it. I think it's brilliant. I really do. It does, <laughs> it does make me smile. Does anybody watch The Great Pottery Throwdown on a Sunday evening? I love that programme. Keith Brimer Jones. Couldn't you just put him in your pocket? Honestly, I love him. He wasn't getting too tearful. Orla was trying to count. She's keeping a score at the moment of how many times Keith Brimer Jones cries in one episode. Yeah. We could, actually. That would be dangerous. That would be very dangerous, <laughs> yes. Oh dear. So, oh brilliant. Sean's starting to put some other things up. So these are slightly more neutrally, but going through to the greys. Now I love this. This is amazing. It's a beautiful linen. It's actually a linen and cotton mix, but I love that. So that I think would just be perfect with a pair of nice black leggings. Just classic. If you haven't got black leggings, who are you really? Um, I think that would be absolutely gorgeous. As a Helena, like I'm wearing, it would work really nicely for a Hippolyta or um, an Amelia dress. Anything that's kind of loose and comfy, I think this would be absolutely ideal. Really nice. Yeah, it's a really gorgeous one, isn't it? I actually like, and now this is the reason why I picked this one out. Now this is another new one and it's got eyes on it, which I love. I think it's really cool. Um, this is what I was thinking. We, you, we have, when we, because we get to know our customers um, and you're all absolutely lovely, but there are certain ones who stand out and we kind of think, when we spot a fabric, we think, aye, aye, that's a whoever fabric. And I think this, I have definitely got a couple of customers in mind when I look at this fabric. So I wonder if you'll guess who you are. I'm not going to say anything, but yeah. Uh, oh, Linda, if you've got a long-winded question for us, do email us. 
um, and we'll see if we can help you. It's hello, send me something at gmail.com and uh, we will see if we can try and help. Oh, Karen says she loves the pottery throwdown. Would buy some of the things they make. I know, that little um, fairy mushroom grotto castle thing that he did this week I thought was absolutely beautiful. But I loved the lighthouse as well. But she's off again. <laughs> it does tickle me, it really does. Um, she's really having a go at it today. That's brilliant. There we go. So uh, this is called I See You, I See You at Night. Um, and I think it's gorgeous. It's a black background. And it has kind of bluey grey, uh, cream, a very soft kind of um, rusty colour and white images on it. But I love that. I thought that would look really nice, especially underneath black cord or black denim ideal wouldn't it as a little funky t-shirt to wear kind of layered up I think that's ideal I love ideal get it sorry that's a really bad that's a proper mum joke isn't it that is a really bad mum joke I do apologize now um this is the luxury crepe that I was speaking about earlier now this is gorgeous this is um our dark gray I think they're called a graphite I can't remember now Sharon will put it up in a sec um you can see I can't my can't break I just can't remember colors at the moment we can't remember colours. It's very frustrating. Um, but this is beautiful. And I think this would be absolutely lovely for... Um, it would make up really nicely in an Imogen top that we mentioned before. An iris as well. Actually, iris would, would look lovely because you could certainly layer that. It's a sleeveless top. Definitely put like a long sleeve t-shirt underneath it. And then a little iris top over the with a little collar. I think that would look really nice actually. Especially layered up with a pair of red trousers now this is this is 100 percent wool this one and it's absolutely beautiful so this would make up in any of our trouser patterns actually it's just a gorgeous weight it really is it's a lovely kind of dark graphite gray but it would make up beautifully in uh platinum thank you <laughs> so Sharon, it's platinum that's the luxury crepe it's called platinum there we are um but this would make up fantastically in the cargo pants, in the aerial cargo pants. I quite like that look where you've got a really casual kind of style, but then you're making it up in a more formal fabric. And it kind of offsets the smartness, if you like, of the fabric. So you can then, she's off again. She's probably on it today. Maybe we ought to bang on the wall or something, I don't know. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that would work really nicely. So you could smarten this up wear it with a nice pair of brogues. Equally, I think it looks nice with a big pair of white trainers. So a wide leg pair of trousers, hero trousers would work really nicely with this. Um, this kind of lovely wool suiting actually works really nicely with top stitching detail. So you could incorporate some of that into the aerial trousers as well, which would be brilliant. I really like that fabric too. Now, the last little group are kind of neutrals. So that's the lovely Hunter's Green. And then we've got these ones here. Now, again, it's all about layering. So these, I think, are absolutely delicious. This is a new one. It's a cotton lawn, a very soft cotton lawn. So again, it, this is perfect for layering, either underneath or over the top of another T-shirt. I think it goes beautifully with the hunter's green linen so you could be having a lovely little um, again a pair of cargo pants or hero trousers um, and then a really nice soft blouse and then maybe having a gray t-shirt underneath it just to kind of tie it all together I think that works really nicely but equally the right kind of tone of green because it's quite yellowy kind of works with our corduroy so this is the forest green cord and then we've got oh verditer there we go verditer and this is a lovely viscose so we've again we've shown this one before but i really like the pattern on this it's such a simple graphic pattern it works really nicely again you can put all of those together and i think they kind of work they kind of mismatch but they're all within that kind of color range which is lovely the last one is our embroidered cotton lawn 
And again, this is in the grey, but we have got the other colourways available. Um, and this is gorgeous. It's just beautifully stitched, lightweight cotton. So again, it's properly blouse weight. Um, but I, this is ideal again for something like an Imogen. Um, you could make a really lightweight Celia top out of it and that would work. She's hammering it next door, isn't she? She really is. I think it's so funny. Oh, got some questions coming through. On the mechanicals, it says how much stretch you need. When you list your fabrics, is it possible to say how much stretch they have? We are going to be doing that, actually. We're going to be changing the product information in there to reflect that. Um, so bear with us because we won't be able to do it overnight. It's an ongoing process. But we are all of the new fabrics that we're going to be putting up, we're actually going to be making sure that they have the percentage stretch on there as well. So hopefully it'll make it easier to choose which ones to buy. So that's good. Oh, brilliant. Sean's popped up all the links in there for the fabrics. That's marvellous. So I'm hoping that there's stuff here that you are really enjoying. Um, we have got wide elastic as well. So if you're looking for elastic for the waistbands, for the leggings or for the snout yoga pants, we have got that in black and white which is quite useful to know. So we've got that here. So you can add that to your order, get it all in one place, and then it's really easy. Um, we do do the thread matching service as well. So don't forget that, because that makes it even easier. So you've got everything all in one go, and then you can just, you've got it all ready, and oh my gosh, she really is. She really is being, oh my. I think she's obviously working off some aggression today, which I find very funny. So hopefully you found something here. And uh, oh, next week, I'm actually going to be on the John Scott show. If any of you remember John Scott from uh, Sewing Quarter, I think he's now over on the Sewing Street. Um, he does his own show, it's a subscription kind of show, um, and he does that live on a Thursday. So I'm going to be with him next week. So if you want to uh, have a look at that, I think you might need to subscribe. We'll see if we can find the link and we'll pop that in the newsletter on Friday. Um, but otherwise you'll be able to join me there. I'm going to be taking my cover stitch and my overlocker over to his studio and uh, we're going to be making up a t-shirt, which will be quite good fun. So we'll see you there. If I don't see you there, we'll see you back here again on Tuesday next week. Um, have a fabulous week. Don't forget to feed the birds and enjoy the sunshine whilst you can. Get out and get some fresh air. It's quite nice out there, really. Um, take care and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.